This teaching you're about to listen to was preached by Jagedis Sunday E and recorded live at God's Family Bible Church, Trinidad. Jagedis Sunday E is the general coordinator of Arabs of Revival Ministries and the School of Discipleship. He is also the missionary pastor of GFBC Trinidad under the leadership of Pastor Abology Akimbo the General Overseer of God's Family Bible Church Worldwide, Palm Coast, Florida. Listen and be transformed. Our Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for your love towards us. Father, we thank you, Lord, for our teaching series that we started, Enjoying Victory in Spiritual Warfare. Lord, as we continue in this teaching today, we ask, Father, that your world, like hammer, will pull down every stronghold of lies, that the devil has built in our mind over the years. We ask, Lord, that your word will come like fire and consume every child, every lies of the devil. That your word will come forth like water and cleanse our mind from every filth that the enemies have sown. Let your word prosper in our life today. Let your word bless us, Father. Give us deep understanding, Holy Spirit. And in Jesus' name we pray. I want to hear you say, Amen. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Now, quickly, I'm continuing on the teaching series that we call Enjoying Victory in Spiritual Warfare. So this is part four. Enjoying Victory in Spiritual Warfare. So we are dealing with enjoying. We are not talking about struggling to have. But we are talking about you enjoying the victory that Christ has already won for you over the devil that Christ has already given to us. Now this is so important for us to understand that we already have the victory. The Bible says 1 Corinthians 15 verse 57. But thanks be to God who give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's 1 Corinthians 15 verse 57. So we already have the victory. That's why I say I have the victory already. Victory. So you have the victory already. Now so you are not trying to have it. You understand what I'm talking about? You, are, you have it already. Christ has defeated all our enemies for us. Now, every battle that we're ever going to fight, every, every adversary, every enemy, every situation, circumstance that is ever going to confront you, you need to understand that you already have the victory. Christ has already made you a winner. Christ has already made you a conqueror. You, you understand what I'm talking about? But you need knowledge to be able to enjoy what you already have. And that's what we've really been talking about. That what are the truths we need to know? What are the knowledge, spiritual knowledge that we need to have so that we will not be trying to have what we already have? You, you understand what, what I'm talking about? There are many Christians today that they are trying to have what Christ has already given to them as a gift. So victory is a gift. We've been able to establish that. It's a gift from God and not a reward for our for our works is available only through Jesus Christ. Now listen to this. This is very important. Now when you have battles of life, when battles of life, when the enemy come against you, when situations are not going the way you want, when you find yourself in an unpleasant circumstances. Now listen to this. The enemy wants you to focus on yourself and on your situation. And then you say, well, I don't think I can, I, can, I can go through this. I don't think I can overcome this. This is too much for me. Now listen to this. Now, you begin to say that and then you, it overwhelms you and then you become discouraged. You become depressed. Do you know the problem? Because you are focusing on yourself. You are focusing on what you can do. And you need to know that as human beings, we are limited. You understand what I'm talking about? But God wants you to focus on Christ. Because the victory comes through Him. We have victory through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So when the enemy rises against me, when I have battles coming against me, now listen to this, I do not look at myself and say, ah, this is too much, I can't handle it. No, you look at Christ. He can handle all things. You understand? He's greater than all things. And that's what we need to know that the victory that we have is not dependent on ourselves, on our worthiness, on our capacity. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? The devil wants you to look at yourself, focus on yourself. Well, 
You that you can't even pray at 20 minutes a day. Are you going to overcome this, this challenge? Are you going to overcome this enemy? But that is a lie. You already have the victory. The victory did not come to you because you can pray. And you listen to what I'm talking about. Oh, you that you can't even fast. You can't even skip a meal a day. You'll be shivering. You'll be shaking. You that you're not even coming to church regularly. Now listen to me. That is not what determines the victory. Are you with me? The victory is a gift from God. You have it. So whether you pray one hour a day or you struggle to pray five minutes a day, it doesn't change the fact that you have victory over the devil. You have authority over the devil. Christ has won it for you. Do you get what I'm talking about? It's so important. I cannot just overemphasize this. That you need to know that you have the victory as a gift from God. And if you are going to enjoy the victory, you need to know Christ who gives you the victory. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? Many of us only know ourselves. What we cannot do. What we can do. What we can take. What we cannot take. This is too much for me. I can't take it. Now listen to this. You need to know Christ. So the knowledge of Christ is important. And that knowledge is a progressive knowledge. You can't know Christ in one day. All through our lifetime we will grow in the knowledge of God. The more you know God, the more you know Christ. Now listen to me. And you know his power. You know his love for you. You know his greatness. You know his, his what, what, what he has already done. Now what will happen to you is that faith will rise up. You'll be bold. You'll be strong. You'll be encouraged to deal with whatever the enemies throws at you. Those who know their God, they shall be strong. And they are going to do exploit. Now, so we need to know Christ. It is important. Knowing Christ is the major key to enjoying the victory that we have in Christ. And there are so many things that we have, we have covered. There are so many truths that we have examined that we discovered. That time will not allow me to go over there. We we'll look at it and you need to understand that you are always in a battle. Many of all, the way we live our life, we think the nice time we have a nightmare, so you, you understand? That is the time that the devil is fighting. Or no, the devil is fighting you 24-7. The devil hates you 24-7. You are always the primary target of the enemy. And that is why things happen to you that don't happen to those who don't know Jesus. And then say, but that guy is not even coming to church. That guy doesn't even know God. Why is everything going well? And look at me, I'm struggling. It is because the devil already have that guy that is not in Christ. Are you with me? Now the devil is taking that person to hell fire. So the devil is not half time again. He's already a slave. A captive. Are you with yeah. me? But you are not. And that's why the devil is after you. Yeah. The devil knows you are going to hell. The devil knows that it's not your boss. It's not your master. That you are not his slave. That is why he's trying to frustrate you. To discourage you. To distract you. To stop you from serving Jesus. So that he can have you and put you back in bondage. And that is why at times you look at unbelievers. That's why you don't study them. You don't help me them. Do you understand? No, you don't help me them. They are slaves. They are in bondage. It appears they are enjoying their life. But listen to me. Anytime the devil can take them away. Anytime the devil can mess up your life. But the devil can't do that with your life. You, you understand? That's why the devil is, is, is hungry. That's why the devil is just trying to discourage you. So you need to know that you are always in spiritual warfare. You are always in the battlefield. And the battle is not a physical one. It's a spiritual battle. Your enemies are not your heads. It's so important for you to understand. Your enemy is not your next neighbor. Your enemy is not your child. It's not your dad. It's not your mom. Your enemy is not the person that is opposing you. The devil is your adversary and the devil always hide the devil likes to put a facade he likes to wear a mask so that you don't know that is the devil that is disturbing you so the devil uh, 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 comes and presents someone to you and says, that is your enemy. And when you are fighting human being like yourself you waste your energy you waste your strength and the devil is fighting you from behind you facing the wrong person so the devil is our adversary. That's what the Bible says. 1 Peter 5 verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil. The word adversary means your opponent, your enemy, the devil. Now the Bible is so specific about it. We do not war against our, our flesh and blood, but who? Principalities. Against power. Ephesians 6 verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Against powers. Against the ruler of the darkness of this age. Against spiritual wars of wickedness in the heavenly places. The Bible didn't put your parents there. The Bible didn't put your family there. The Bible didn't put your neighbor there. 
Are you listening to me? They are not principality. They are not power. Those are the fallen angels that fell with the devil. These are our enemies. But you know what? The devil tried to set us against one another. All right? That even in the church we fight ourselves. We are missing it. We are missing it. And our enemies are busy walking behind because we are fighting the wrong people. Are you listening to what? I, now we have our differences. You know, we we may have some misunderstanding, but that does not make us enemies. You, you understand? The devil is our enemy, and in spiritual warfare, if you are going to enjoy the victory, you must face the real enemy. There are many people that are trapped fighting someone else, while the devil is left to keep fighting and working against them. So we look at that and it's so important. We also say we need to understand that the warfare we fight is battle of words. Your mouth is important. What you say is important. You don't curse yourself. You don't curse your family. You don't say negative things to yourself because when you do that, you are agreeing with the enemy to destroy your life. That's how we fight spiritual warfare. We speak the war. You understand? So when you keep speaking negative things over your life, your relationship. Are you listening to me? You know, uh, at times I talk to some young ladies and say, well, when I say, so what's going on in your marital life? You say, yes, I have someone, but you know, men, <laughs> you you understand that where I'm not putting my heart there because you understand. Now I told, I said, you're already causing the relationship already. You understand? You're already saying it's not going to work. And when the guy leave you and say, well, I know all men are the same. No, you set it in motion. You cause it. You release evil spirit to turn the heart of the man against you. That is how all spiritual battles are for. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? I said, no. Why not be saying good? Why not wake up in the morning and say, this guy, this man is different from the rest. This one loved me. This one is going to stay with me. This is my right partner. Why you say, well, you, you, you know, you can't trust men. You can't, you know that, well, is this good for now? I said, what, what are you talking about? Are you expecting it to turn sour at the next moment? You understand? No, I said, no, you are cursing yourself. You are cursing yourself. Now, you have to be careful of that. That in spiritual warfare, your words are important. And you listen to what I'm talking about. Now, I can come here and bless you. AJ can appear and bless you. But when you go out there and curse yourself and say negative to yourself, do you know what you have done? You have neutralized all the blessings that we have released upon your life. So this is so important. We have looked at that, that we must be careful what we say. We must confess only what God has said concerning our life. Hallelujah. And we also said it is important for us to know our enemy. And this is where we stop. And we're going to move on this morning. So enjoy victory spiritual warfare part four. And we started last week to begin to look at who is this our enemy? Satan. And all those is demons. How did they fight us? How did they how did they deceive us? We need to understand their origin. We need to understand their mission. And of course, we need to understand their strategies and also what is their hand? What is their hand? And I remember that I said last week that don't ask the devil who the devil is. Okay? Don't tell the devil, Mr. Devil, could you please introduce yourself? That guy is a liar. He's going to blow himself up. He's going to exaggerate. He's going to tell you what he can never do. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Because the devil is a liar. He's a liar. He's the father of lies. So far, we have been able to look at four things about Satan. And uh, we're going to move on from there. When we say Satan, now, nah, was not created by God. I said... Because I told you that my daughter said, but why did God create the devil? I said, no, God didn't create the devil. He said, well, you said God created everything. I said, yes, God created an angel called Lucifer. We look at this last week, but Lucifer became proud and boastful and arrogant, and he wanted to take the place of God, and then he became corrupted. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? He was a beautiful angel, perfect in beauty. Perfect in all his way, full of wisdom. But God spoiled all that. God said, I destroy you. I cast you out of my holy mountain. Isaiah, Isaiah 14, uh, Ezekiel 20. Alright? So the devil came into this world not as a perfect angel anymore. And that is when he became Satan. You understand? So it was not Satan. God didn't make Satan. Lucifer became Satan. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That's so important. We're still going to get there where you need to understand that. Now, because God is not the author of evil. Okay? So we also look at it that Satan is not omnipotent. Satan does not have unlimited power and authority. 
Now, you have to be careful. The agents of the devil will tell you that, look, Satan can just kill you. Satan, but we realize from the scripture last week that Satan cannot do that. If Satan can kill you, he will have killed you. Are you listening to me? If Satan has all the power, he will have stopped me from coming to Trinidad. You understand? He couldn't do it. He tried. But Satan is limited in his power. And we realized last week that the power that the devil is using is actually what man gave unto him. All right, it was the first man Adam that gave him authority, but Jesus had come, he had spoiled the devil, taking the authority from him, and he gave us a super authority over the devil. Hallelujah! So, don't be afraid of the devil, that guy does not have the power that you think he has. We also say you need to understand that Satan is not omnipresent, Satan is not present everywhere at the same time. There are many people that, even when the wind blows their curtain, they think that is Satan. All right, no. Don't, don't live your life like that. Satan is not everywhere. Some people think everywhere they go, Satan follow them. You understand? When you live like that, you live in fear and in torment. No, it is only God that is with you all the time. It's only God that says, I will never leave you, not forsake you. Satan can't say that because he doesn't have the capacity to do that. You understand what I'm talking about? So you need to know that Satan can only come when he's invited, all right? When you listen to his lie. When you begin to say negative things to yourself, when you live in fear, you open the gate for the devil to come. When you patronize the agent of the devil, when you go to someone and say, read my palm, look at my star, can you do this for me? Can you check this for me? And they use evil power. They conjure and they, they use evoke evil spirit. And you listen to what I'm talking about. Now, when you are going home, then a demon follow you as a monitoring spirit. So so that next time when you come, the people can tell the man what you have been doing. And then the person tells him that guy sees no. If you come when you are, are patronizing, he has assigned a monitoring spirit to follow you about. Are you listening to me? You went to get the devil. The devil is just there waiting for whoever needs his help or his assistant. So the devil is not everywhere, and so we don't need to be afraid of the devil. Our God is with us. We have the Holy Spirit that abides with us always, always. And we also said. That Satan does not have unlimited knowledge and wisdom. It's not omniscient. Now, what that means is that he doesn't know what you are thinking. <laughs> Many people think that Satan knows everything. No, he doesn't know everything. He doesn't know your dream. Are you listening to me? He can guess. Now, the devil does not know the next step you are going to take. It's only God that knows you inside out. And most of the time, we are the ones that reveal our secret to the devil. You understand? Because we don't have control over man. We just say everything. Things that you are still planning to do 10 years, you already, you've told everybody. And then you wonder why things are not working well. You reveal your plan to the devil. And then you begin to fight against. There are some things you better hide them until when everybody sees and the glory and they say, wow, so this happened. He said, yes, sir. It happened some time ago. You understand? Many of us reveal what God is doing in our life when we should still keep it. You, you understand what I'm protecting? So, what I'm saying is that the devil does not know everything. It is what you tell someone that the devil gets to know. And say, okay, so this is what you want to do. So, don't think the devil knows what you are thinking. Don't think the devil understands all God's plan for you. Like, he does not have that knowledge. If he has that infinite knowledge, then he becomes God. It's only God that has an infinite knowledge that knows tomorrow, today. It's only God that knows what is going to happen you know, uh, uh, in 20 years time. The devil is limited. He doesn't have that wisdom. You understand? Now, but the devil wanted to think that he knows everything. That is a lie. Devil is limited. I told you last week that even the specific address, the place where Jesus was born, the devil didn't know it. Can you see how dumb he is? People know when the, 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 the wise man came and said, he was born in Bethlehem. It was written and Herod wanted to kill Jesus. Alright? Herod, I believe we have contacted all those sorcerers and all those who have said, can't you guys find a way to know where Jesus is? So they will go and kill him. But nobody knew. <laughs> because Satan didn't know. So you see, something like that, that is written in the Bible, <laughs> that we born, the devil said, I know you will be born in, in, in Bethlehem. But we are in Bethlehem. He didn't know. But many people think the devil knows everything. He doesn't know everything. So don't, you know, what we are telling is for you to really know the devil in the light of God's word. And I told you, it is only God that can tell you who the devil is. All right? Now, the agents of the devil will not tell you who the devil is. They are going to present the devil as a super being, a super God to you. No, he's not. He's limited. He's limited. All right? And we also said this, that Satan is the father of life. I want us to move on from that. Let's look at John chapter 
chapter 8, verse 44. So these are four things we have been able to say, uh, understand uh, from God's word about Satan, our adversary, the devil. John chapter 8, verse 44, the Bible says Jesus talking to some Jews who did not believe in him. He said, you are your father, the devil. John 8, 4, 4. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. So the devil does not abide on continuing the truth. Now, at times the devil may say the truth, but that truth is to deceive you, all right? You know, because I've seen some people, they come to me and say, well, uh, but, but when I went to that man to read my plan, some of the things that he said has happened to me, they are things that have really happened to me, all right? So, okay, but it's still to deceive you, all right? Now, some people go to some of those spiritualists and they say, when they come in, they say, I know you have a problem. You, are, you have a big problem. If you don't have a problem, will you be there? <laughs> those things are times are just psychology. You, you, you understand? You know, now when you see somebody that is worried, you know something is wrong with you. They say, I, I can see that something is wrong with you. Of course, something is wrong with you. That's why you are there. Now, so you don't believe the devil. You don't believe those agents. Now, they may say something that are right, but listen to this. The Bible said they don't continue in the truth. Because why? There is no truth in him. There is no truth in the devil. He's full of lies. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. That one means he speaks according to his nature. So whenever you tell like, now, let, let's get this right. Whenever you tell like, do you know what you are doing? You are speaking from Satan's resources. You know what that means? You are patronizing the devil. Lie is devil's product. You understand? So when you when you uh, uh, tell a lie to someone, it doesn't matter what you call it if it is not true. Now, what you are doing is that you are buying devil's product, okay? And you are encouraging him to produce more. All right, so he's a liar, and the Bible says he's the father of it. So Satan is the source of lies. Now, that's where we, uh, where we stopped last week. And let's move forward. Let's move forward quickly. We'll just look at four things uh, before we pray. Still about Satan. It is important to know our enemy. You must not underestimate the devil. You must not overestimate the devil. You must know who the devil really is so that you can deal with him correctly. So what we are looking at is a right concept, right estimation. We want to have right perception of the devil. And it's only the word of God that can tell us who the devil is. All right? Don't listen to those who call themselves the agents of the and say, well, I used to be with the devil, uh, but now I am the liver. And then they, they told you a lot of those things. I said, they were deceived when they were with the devil. So most of those things they, they are saying is not true. Because the devil is a liar. He has told them lies and deceived them. Only believe what the word of God says about the devil. So four more things. One, now, the Bible teaches that Satan is the source of evil. This is very important. Now, we need to know that if it is evil, it comes from Satan. Satan is the author of evil, is the origin, is the producer and manufacturer of evil. Evil is the nature of Satan. And you listen to me, when Lucifer fell, he became completely evil. He was a good angel, perfect angel. And you listen to me, but as we read in Ezekiel 28, that his wisdom corrupted him. You understand? He became boastful and proud. I am better than all the angels. Who is like me? Alright? But he forgot that he was created to serve God. And he became completely evil. So there is nothing good in the devil. There is nothing good about the devil. And this is very important. Most of those people that patronize those agents of the devil for help for an assistant, do you know what? They don't know that devil is completely evil. All right? Those who go to what they call them, love guru, and say, can you help me with a love portion? There's someone I want you to love me at all for. You are asking the wrong person. All right? Now, it's evil. At the end of the day, you are going to cry. It's going to mess up everything for you. Those who go to the devil and all those agents to make get some money ritual for them to, they tell you, you know, you see them all over online, in paper, you want success, you want that, and they are portraying the devil, now listen to me, as someone that can help, as someone that has some good things to offer. Now listen to this. Every good gift that the devil gives to you, every package that he gives you and says this is good, is a time bomb. And you listen to what I'm talking about. It's somebody that wrapped a time bomb in a good wrapper. I give it to you. It's going to kill you. The devil will detonate it at any time. And you listen to me. When the devil gives you something sweet and you are drinking it, that is a sweet poison. 
Now, so you need to know that there is nothing good that is in the devil. He's completely evil and he hates you. So he can give you something that seems good. He can offer a help and assistance. But listen to this. He's coming after you. Everything you think the devil has given to you is coming to take it hundredfold. And he's going to take your soul with it. So Satan is evil. If it is not good, it is not from God. Let's quickly look at what the scripture says. Look at Genesis. Let's start from there. The book of Genesis chapter 1. Look at the last verse. Verse 31. That's a simple thing to know. God is good. If it is good, it is from God. Satan is evil. If it is evil, it is from the devil. If it will cause you pain, if it does not give joy and happiness, it cannot be from God. Genesis 1 to 1, look at what God says. The Bible says, then God saw everything that he had made. Now take note of that, everything, everything that God made. And indeed it was what? Very good. Let's have say very good. Very good. Now that is God. That is what comes from God. Very good. But from the devil... Very bad, very evil. That's what comes from the devil. Look at James chapter 1. So if it is not very good, now listen to this, you don't have to take it. It is from the devil. It is the handiwork of the devil. You have every right to say, I am not taking this. I will not accept this. Alright? James chapter 1, look at 16, 17. The Bible said, do not be deceived. Now, Satan wants to deceive you. Are you listening to me? And say, well, God is using sickness to test your faith. That is a lie. Sickness is evil. Oh, God is using this poverty, this failure to test your faith. No, that is a lie. That is from the devil. Are, are you with me? There are some Christians that believe that. Now, let me, let me ask you this question. If you have a child, and you want to test whether your child really loves you, okay? Whether your child is a good child. Are you going to test your child with cancer? Of course not. You're not going to put cancer. Then you see diabetes and all that in the body of your child and say, I want to test whether when you have problem, you will come to me. No. A, a reasonable parent will not do that. So how will you not think that God, your father in heaven, a good God, is going to put sickness in your body and say, I'm putting that sickness so that you can pray, so that you can come to me. No. That is the devil deceiving you. That's why the Bible said, do not be deceived. He said, now look at verse 17. Every good Every good gift and every perfect gift is well from above. Come down from the Father of life, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. That is the only thing that God did. God is completely good. Evil cannot come from you. Sickness cannot come from God. Poverty cannot come from God. Divorce cannot come from God. Betrayal and all those hearts, it cannot come from God. Do you know what God tests people straight with? With good things. You understand? Now, look at Abraham, the father of faith. Now, God didn't say, well, Abraham, I'm going to test your faith, how you love me, so I'm not going to give you the promised child. And no, God gave him the promised child. That's the way God operates. He will give you what he has promised you, all right? And then you want to see whether you now love what he has given you more than him. That is the only test of faith that you go through. It's not that God tests you with poverty and says, well, well, I will, I will be frustrating all your effort and all that, so I want to see whether you will love me, whether you serve me. No, no. God will test you with abundance, with prosperity, with sources. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? That is the way God does. So, if it is evil, don't be deceived. It is not from God. It is not from God. If it is something that gives you heartache, if it is something that makes you weak in the secret, now, nah, don't let anybody tell you that is God testing your faith. That's a lie. Devil is the source of evil. It's the source of evil. There's nothing good that comes from him. Now, the Bible says about him that he's a thief. The devil does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's what the devil does. That's why you don't get help from the devil. You don't take any assistance from the devil. If the devil knocks at your door and says, I want to help you, tell the devil, I don't need your help. Because when he comes, he does not come to help. He comes to steal from you, to kill you, and to destroy you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The Jesus, uh, the, the Bible says about Jesus, First John chapter three verse eight, that He came to destroy the works of the devil. What is the works of the devil? Evil. Everything that is evil. That's why, as Christians, you have right to say, "No sickness will dwell in my body, because sickness does not come from your Father. My children will succeed; they will be great, because successes will come from God, not failure." So please, we, we, we need to understand that, that we must not let the devil deceive us. 
Now, evil comes from him, and we have a right to say no. The Bible says of Jesus, Acts 10, 38, that he came, you know, and how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. The Bible says he went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Now, take note of that. Jesus came to deliver, to heal those who are oppressed by the devil. So, who oppressed people? It is the devil. It is the devil. Are you with me? If it is a bad dream, are you listening to what I'm talking about? It's not from your God. It is from the devil. It is the devil that does not make people to sleep well at night, not God. Are, are you with me? Now, we need to get it. You know, in our world now, people are trying to portray the devil as a, as a nice guy. There's a film that uh, my wife forced me to watch the other time. It's about Lucifer. And in that, uh, in that uh, movie, they presented the devil. They call him, I think they actually call him Lucifer. I see he's a, he's a nice guy, helping people, he solve some crime and things like that. That's a lie. They are trying to present the devil to all. They are trying to give you a concept of the devil that is contrary to what the Bible says. That is the devil motivating those who are weak from this. So that the next time you hear about Lucifer, about Satan, you think he's, he's a nice guy. No, he's not a nice guy. Not a nice guy. He's evil. He's wicked. If he tries to befriend you, he's to kill you, to destroy you. Yeah. To frustrate you at the end of the day. Now, you know, we cannot overemphasize that, but I wanted to know that God will never tempt you with evil. James chapter 1, look at the same James we read before. Look at it from verse 12. James 1, this is an important scripture that we need to know. So, the devil is the author of evil. You don't have to put up with the evil because it is not from God. James chapter 1, 12, 13, 14, 15. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one, can you see what the world say? Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. God doesn't tempt anyone with evil. Alright? Don't let anybody tell you that that is God. God is trying to take it from you. Because God wants to see how you will feel. That is a lie. God is not a thief. He's a blesser. It is the devil that steals and takes from all. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? If God wants to test your face, you to have more blessings to you. Alright? That's the way God tests. So, we need to understand that, that that is the devil. The second thing I want us to uh, uh, look at today about the nature of the devil. Now, listen to this. That Satan's ultimate desire is worship. is worship. This is important. This is important. If you ask the devil, Hi, Mr. Devil, what is it that you love most in life? Satan is going to tell you, I love to be worshipped. I love to be worshipped. That's just what Satan wants. And he will go to any land to get it. And you listen to what he will do anything, he will say anything for anyone to worship him. You know, Satan, do you know that's that's really why he fell? That was really his problem while he was in heaven as Lucifer. He wanted to be worshipped. In Isaiah 14, he said, I want to be like the most high God. Do you know why? Because God is the only one receiving the worship. All the angels were worshiping God. And they will say, Well, I'm better than all the angels as Lucifer. Am I not perfect in beauty and wisdom and all that? I think I'm just favorite. I think I have power more than them all. I have wisdom more than them all. Can they be worshipping me too? Can they also be bowing to me too? That's what the devil wants. Isaiah 14 from 13 said, For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne. Can you see that word? That's just what Satan wants to be the Almighty. To occupy the seat of God, the throne of God. That is just what he wants. Verse 14, I will ascend above the height of the cloud. I will be like the Most High. I want to be worshipped. You remember when Satan was tempting Jesus in the book of Luke chapter 4. Listen to these God's people. Do you know what? When he came to Jesus, look at the request that Satan made. He said, Luke verse 6, Luke chapter 4, from verse 6. And the devil said to Jesus, all this authority, that is all this word, I will give to you and their glory. For this has been delivered to me. I give. Take note of that. I give to whoever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. Can you see how much he loved worship? He said, hey, Jesus, you know what? Let's settle it now. I don't mind giving you all things. Just bow down right here and worship me. That satisfies me. Do you know what? Devil has not changed. Devil can give you anything. Alright? Once you can bow down and worship the devil. 
You understand? Right? Now, that's all. That's all that the devil is after. The devil is seeking for worshippers. The devil wants people to. That's why at times you see all those uh, we call stars or celebrities or whatever they, they call. Now, you know, some of them, they mortgage their soul for the devil. You understand? They just want fame and prosperity and all that. And at the end of the day, they are caught up in the prime of their, of their life. Now, now, all that the devil wants from them, just worship me, stay there, promote me. You understand? Same terrible things, blaspheme the name of God and things like that. That's all that the devil wants. And in return, it will give them what they want just for a short time. That's the foolishness of man. We don't know that whatever the devil gives doesn't last. And whatever the devil gives is, is a time bomb. It's going to explode. It's going to destroy you. It's going, when you think you are enjoying it, that's when the devil is going to come back and say, now give it to me. I'm true with you. Yeah. Now, so the devil wants worship. And, and listen to this. Listen to this. The devil knows that God wants worship. All right? That the reason why... Now, listen to this. God created us to worship him. It's for his pleasure. All right, because what we call worship is anything you do for God's pleasure. That is worship. Now, so Satan' ultimate desire is to discourage you, distract you, stop you from worshiping God. As long as you are not worshiping God, now guess who you are worshiping is Satan. Because there are just only two people. I mean, two people in life that really desire worship: Satan on one side and our God on one side. Now, so you can only worship. Either of the two. So, if you are not worshipping God, there is no middle ground. Are you with me? I want you to get this right. There are many people that think they are worshipping God, but they are really worshipping Satan. I want to tell you why. It is not those people back in Africa that, 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 that made uh, the graven image or whatever and bowed down to stone that are worshipping Satan. Now, in this Western world, many people are worshipping Satan. Do you know who? Why? Because they are worshipping themselves. They are worshipping money. Some it is their career they are worshipping. Now, you know some people it is their family. I was talking to a woman the other time. He said, oh, my family first. <laughs> and, I, and I look at her and I say, then God second. They say, well, you know, family. I said, no. God says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I say, it's not your family first. It's your God first. Then your family second. <laughs> and the person looked at me. I said, hey, well, <laughs> That's why I'm a pastor. I can look at you first so I can tell you the truth. I said, look, if you don't put God first, it is Satan that is first. Because it's only two or either of them that can be first in your life. That's what Satan wants. Now, can you see what Satan wants? I want to be like the Mosah. I want to exalt my throne above the stars of God. Satan came at the throne of God. You understand? He wants to sit on the throne. He wants to be worshipped. He wants your life to, to move the way he wants it. Now, so if you are not serving God, worshiping God in spirit and in truth, then you are worshiping Satan. There's no other way about it. The scripture says you cannot serve God and mammon. You understand? But many of us today, we put money, our career, our job, our business ahead of God. You understand? Now, if God say, come, could you please come to the church and do something? And then you have a business to do. We don't think twice, all right? We just go for the business. <laughs> Now, that is exactly what Satan wants. He wants you to disobey God. He wants you to despise God. He wants you to, to, to disdain God. He wants you to treat God as second for you. He wants you to treat God as someone that is not so important. That is what he wants. So whenever you despise God, whenever you treat the things of God as it does not really matter, there's something more important than God. Are you with me? There's something more important than serving God. You are falling into the worship trap of the devil. Yeah. No, on the last day, many will be shocked. When they say, oh God, uh, I'm a worshiper of God. God say, no, you have never worshipped me. Because I'm second, third, fourth in your life. There are people that are place ahead of me. There are things that are place ahead of me. And that is what Satan wants. Now, Satan does not just want you to say, I'm Satan, can you bow down and worship me? I'm Satan. No, that's not what he wants. He just wants something. As long as he can get something before you that you devote your life to, devote your time to, devote your energy, and it is not God. Satan is happy. He says, after all, you are not worshiping God. You are worshipping yourself. Some, ourselves, has become a god to us. 
Now we need to change because the devil is after worship. And the devil does not want anyone to worship God in spirit and truth. That is why when you want to come to church, the devil gives you a lot of reason why you shouldn't come, all right? When you say, well, when I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to praise, I'm going to worship God, then the devil brings some issues. You understand? Because that is what he hates most. Every time we come to church and lift up our hand and worship God, the devil is upset, he's angry. That is what he doesn't want. Because he feels it should be the most high, it should be worship. So we need to understand that Satan loves worship. And if we don't seek God first, if we don't make God our priority in life, if we don't let our life revolve around God, then we are falling into the worship trap of the devil. Because any other thing that we place ahead of God or place above God, now listen to me, it doesn't matter what you call that, that is Satan receiving your worship. Because if God is not receiving your worship, then Satan is the one receiving it. You understand what I'm talking about? So please, as, 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 as children as, as children of God, as God's people, we must always be sure that God is number one in our life. Oh, God wants us to love people, love family, but not more than God. <laughs> you understand? God himself is Lord. And then he tells you, the only way you can love me is when you love me, because love comes from God. It flows from God. It's God that gives up capacity to love people. That's why God said, let your heart be for me. Love the Lord that God with all your might, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your heart. And when you do that, God will give you capacity to love people too. But when you say, no, I have my lover, I have my boyfriend, I have my girlfriend, I have my fears, I have my wife, I have my child. And that is, it means the whole world. You know what I'm I look at people and say, what? My child, my husband means the whole world to me. I say, really? <laughs> That's deceiving yourself. If you're a true believer, it's only one person that means the whole world, and that is God. And you listen to me because the child, the husband, whatever you are celebrating, is a gift from God to you. So if you are smart, you don't put a gift ahead of the giver. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm talking about? So it's so important to settle it in your life that look, Mr. Satan, you are not getting my worship. And that means I'm not setting anything ahead of God in my life. I'm setting no one, I'm setting no relationship, I'm setting no job, no career, no business ahead of God in my life. God is number one and it will always remain number one in my life. Can somebody say God is my number one? Are you sure that's what you mean? Say God is my number one. Alright, every other person, every other thing come behind God. Now let's look at two more things and then we pray. Now, having said that, I want you to know that Satan's target is your mind, is your soul. This is so important. If you ask the devil, all right, devil, I know you want to worship. But what is this really in my life? What is the place, your favorite place in my life? They will tell you, it's your mind, it's your soul. I just need your mind. I just, need, I just want to be in control of your thinking, of your thought. That's what matters to the devil. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Now, because the devil knows that once he can get your mind, he has gotten your life. <laughs> your mind is the battlefield. It's the spiritual battlefield. Now, listen to this. Now, you either win or lose from the mind. Look at Proverbs 10, 3, verse 7. Very popular scripture. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If the devil can get you to be thinking failure, you will eventually become a failure in life. If the devil can get you to be thinking poverty, you will eventually be, become poor in life. And that is why the devil bombards you with negative thought all the time. That is why the devil arranged people to speak negative words to you. Alright? Do you know what the devil is trying to do? The devil is looking for bricks. And you will need stones to build a stronghold in your mind, in your mind. That is why parents, we have to be careful what we say to our children. When you keep telling that thing and look at you, you are not like other children. You are not good. You, I know you can't do anything well. You are a failure. Look at you. You are not a good child. Do you know what the devil will do with all those words? He will use them as stone, as, as bricks. And then build a prison in the mind of that child. And then we tell that child, you are already a failure. Your parents said you are a failure. People like that you say you are not good for anything. And that child is in prison in his mind. And he can't step forward to succeed. And you listen, he can't, he can't attend anything great. Because they have told him that you are nobody in life. So it's so important that the devil's strongest prison is built in people's mind. 
Are you with me? The strongest prison that the devil has is not in the water, it's not in the air, it's in people's mind. I've met quite a number of people like that. That what they believe about themselves is contrary to what God says in his world. You understand? They say, how can you, how can you believe that? How can, how can you be saying that to yourself? Because over the years, that is what they are exposed to. That is what the devil, through people, have told them that they are. But that is not true. That is not true. Don't forget that devil is a liar. Whatever the devil tells you, you can't trust the devil. If the devil says you are not beautiful, now listen to this, it's because you are the most beautiful person on earth. The devil is a liar. He can't tell you the truth. So we need to know that the devil wants to go for our mind. Now listen to this, because your life goes in the direction of your predominant thought. That's what you mind. Because your ways are formed from your mind. Now, when a man keeps speaking without thinking or processing, he says, that man is a madman, he's a crazy person. Because every word comes from the mind. Are you with me? You process things in your mind. Now, your feelings, your emotions are controlling your mind. Your mind is a control center. Your mind is the seat of your intellect. Your mind controls your feelings. Your mind is important. Your life goes in the direction that your mind is going. And that is why the devil is after your mind. If the devil get a hold on your mind, he has gotten a foothold in your life. If the devil can gain access to your mind, he has gained access to your life. If you can allow the devil to sow all his lies into your mind, and listen to this, you are in big trouble. You are in bondage already. You are in prison already. So Satan goes for people's mind. Now let me show you a sample in the scripture. Look at this guy uh, that betrayed Jesus. Judas is carried. Look at John chapter 13. John chapter 13. So our mind is the battlefield. Our mind is what the devil really wants. The devil can't get hold of your spirit. Do you know why? Because you are a new creation. The day you became born again, your spirit is changed. And you have the spirit of Christ and your spirit is sealed, held along with the Holy Spirit. But your soul is not yet completely sealed. Your mind is still accessible to Satan. And that is why I tell you, you have to be careful with the news, the, 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 the movie and all those things you watch. If somebody is negative thing they keep projecting on the media to you, you have to shut your mind against it and say, no, 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 that's not for me. That's not mine. Look at John chapter 13 from verse 1. The Bible said, now before the peace of Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to be with his father. Having loved his own, who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Now look at verse 2. And supper being ended, the devil, take note, having already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon sought to betray. Now, let's take note of that. How did Judas Iscariot end up betraying Jesus that he claimed to love? The Bible says the devil did what? Put it in his heart. How the devil, how did the devil put it in his heart? Now, we're trying to see the strategy of the devil. Now, Judas Iscariot knew that the Pharisees and those uh, religious leaders of Jesus did that they didn't like Jesus at all. Jesus was spoiling business for them. Alright? Now, so they wanted to kill him. They wanted to find a way to arrest him. Alright? And this guy, now listen to this. The devil, I believe, it was not only Judas Iscariot that the devil suggested it to. He might have suggested it to Simon Peter, to James and John. I said, why not go to the Pharisees? You can make good money, you know. Just tell them that well, they didn't even know Jesus. They didn't know his movement. Just go to them and say, I can arrange a meeting for you and Jesus. I can arrange a place where you will, if you want to arrest Jesus. And then, the devil also put it in the heart of Jesus and say, of course you know Jesus has power. You understand? He wouldn't allow anybody to, to, to just catch him like that. Jesus will escape and then you make money. You will have already collected money from them and when they come to arrest Jesus, they won't be able to arrest him. Now, the devil brings the suggestion. Now listen to it. Do you know what? Judas Iscariot had the right to say, no, I love Jesus, I'm not going to betray you. I believe he would have suggested it to Simon Peter. Simon Peter said, no, 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 no. I will never go that direction. No, no, no. I'm not traveling with you, devil. No. But Judas Iscariot... Stay there and I say, I think I can make 30 pieces of silver. You know, I can make some money there. That's a good deal. That's a good business. The moment he accepted that, he has already followed the devil. Do you know what? Because whenever you yield yourself to obey, you become a slave of that person. Now, 
People are trying when they kill, when the mother, they say the devil made me to do it. That's a lie to the devil. You understand? No, the devil can't force anybody to do anything. You must be willing. The devil brings suggestion to you and do it with And then you, you are the one that will say, yes, I think I will do that. And once you say, yes, I will do that, then the devil give you the push that you need. But he has no power. Don't forget, we have looked at it that devil does not have unlimited power. Are you with me? Devil has no power to control any man's will. Devil only control those who yield themselves to obey him. Are you really with me? That's why when you say, I choose to serve Jesus, the devil can't do anything about him. He cannot start to find out how to discourage you. Right? But he cannot make you not to make up your mind to serve Jesus. No, he can't do that. Do you know why? Because even God that has infinite power does not do that. God does not remotely control people. God does not tamper with our will. God wants our will yielded unto him. Are you with me? Do you know if God wants to tamper with our will and forcefully make us to do everything, He will have made everybody in the world to believe in Jesus, to be saved. But God respects our will because He wants us to be an entity that can decide for ourselves. And so Satan now, I'm talking of God the Almighty now, now Satan who has limited power, how will He force you to do anything? No, He cannot. He cannot force you. Are you with me? Amen. So you have to heal yourself. You have to be willing. And the devil gives you all the encouragement. You know how he does it? He begins to dangle before you things that you will gain when you follow that path. Are you with me? That's the way the devil works. That's the strategy of the devil. And that is what the devil did to Judas Iscariot. And that is why at the end of the day, Judas Iscariot was highly mad. Do you know what he did? He went to hang himself. He committed suicide. That tells you that he didn't hate Jesus. Are you with me? He didn't hate Jesus. He loved Jesus. If he hated Jesus, do you know when they arrested Jesus and crucified, do you know what he would do? He would go to the pub and celebrate. He would go and throw a party and, and rejoice. But he didn't rejoice. He was sad. He was sorrowful. Because that was not his plan. That was not what the devil suggested. The devil just said, you know Jesus will escape. You will just get some cool money. But he didn't know that the devil was just trying to look for someone that he can use. Hallelujah. So you need to make up your mind that no, 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 no. I'm not going to follow the devil in my mind. I'm not going to listen to Satan's lie. So you have the right. Now listen to this. What the devil is bringing any suggestion to you, you have the right to say, no, I don't want that. I'm not going to travel that. And don't brood over it. Are you with me? Don't think over it. Don't sit down there and be thinking and say, well, no. If it is evil, if it is negative, if it is contrary to the will of God, what do you do to it? You cut it off. You abort that thought right there. You switch your mind from it and say, I reject that. I'm not thinking that. I'm not thinking that. I'm not going that place. Let me read this scripture. Look at Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. And then we take one more thing and pray. Now so Satan cannot force you to do anything. But the devil can give you suggestion. Alright. So it is now left to you to decide. Whether you are traveling with the devil or not. Whether you are going to listen to the devil or not. Look at the book of Philippians chapter 4. The scripture gives all things to be thinking about. Philippians 4 verse 8, finally brethren, whatever things are true. Now, so those are the things you should focus on and meditate on. Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on this thing. Can you see that one? Let's all say meditate. Mm -hmm. Now, so if the devil brings anything outside what Philippians 4 years say, you have the right to say, no, I'm not meditating on this. I'm not sitting down to think on it. Because when you begin to sit down and you think and think and turn it over and over in your mind, you're already traveling with the devil. You're already yielding to the devil. And once you start yielding to the devil like that, and listen to this, the devil will take you further than you plan to go. It will take you. That's why you don't follow the devil. You say, well, devil, I will only go one mile with you. You won't know when you will follow the devil 100 miles. So don't take a step and follow the devil at all. Do you know there are many people now that are regretting in the prison? When they started stealing, now listen to this, all their plan is that once we just uh, do this one business, you understand? And then maybe rob, and then just make, I'm going to make more money, and then I'm going to start a good business. But do you know what? Once you yield it to the devil like that, you can't stop. 
The best thing is not to give it a trial at all. When you say, well, let me give it a trial. When the devil brings it, so you say, let me try it. But I'm not going to do everything. No, you can't. Because once you yield your will, then the devil drag you along. All the devil just did is you say, okay, go in the front, I follow. And then he drag you along, he drag you along until you rise up and say, enough is enough, I'm not following you. I want to close with this. The last thing I want you to know about Satan is that Satan's faith, destiny, has already been sealed. The final play, the final end of the devil is hellfire. The devil cannot escape it. And this is so important for us to know. Because if I travel with the devil, now listen to this, then I'm going to hell in hellfire because that's where the devil is going. Yeah. The devil is heading towards destruction. The devil is heading towards bottomless feet. The devil is heading towards eternal pain, agony, and sorrow. Anyone that follows the devil, that's where you are going to hell. You Now listen to this, the devil has no heaven for anybody. So if you follow the devil, you won't hell in heaven. You won't. You won't. Devil is already judged, he has been judged and condemned to hell. He's just waiting the full execution of that judgment. John 16, verse 11, the Bible said, The ruler of this world is judged. Satan is already judged. Look at Revelation chapter 20, and then we we'll take one more scripture. The book of Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, look at verse 10. Let me quickly because of time. That's caught in the middle. He said, the devil, Revelation 20, 10, the devil would deceive them. Can you see that word? Was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and they'll be tormented day and night forever and ever. That is the destiny of the devil. That is the final place of the devil. Hellfire, the lake of fire and brimstone. That's where the devil is going to hell. But you know something about this guy called the devil? He made up his mind that he's not going to be lonely in Elfa. He won't come That he's going to take as many people that will choose to follow him to where he's going. He already knows where he's going. Unfortunately, many who follow the devil don't know where the devil is going. Yeah. There are many, I believe, that are regretting in hell now because they follow the devil. The devil dangled the wealth and the riches of this world before them. Just the same way he, he, he dangled it before Jesus. said, you just bow down and worship me. Alright? And many people, they jump for that and they say, I have fame, I have wealth, I have riches, I have big mansion, beautiful cars. You understand? And all courtesy of the devil. <laughs> but they don't know that the devil doesn't mind you enjoying the things of this world. He knows you are not going to enjoy it forever just for a short while and then you will end with him in a lake of fire regretting it forever and ever. So don't be stupid. Don't follow the devil where he's going. He's not heading in a good place. Are you with me? Now, so that we need to know. God will reveal to us that the final place of the devil is the lake of fire. And Matthew 25 verse 41, you remember what Jesus said? He said, when the Son of Man will return in his glory, with his angels sitting on the throne of glory. He said, all the nations will be gathered to him, and then he will divide them, separate them, some to the right and some to the left. And look at what Jesus said to those who are on the left, Matthew 25 41, and I close with this. Then he will say to those on the left, now listen to this, Jesus said to those on the left, depart from me, you cause, into what? The everlasting fire, Prepare for the devil and his angel. Can you see? The everlasting fire was what? Originally prepared for who? The devil and his angel. The fallen angel. But you know something? God has no choice. When you choose, when people choose to follow the devil, they have to go where the devil is going. So hellfire was not in originally prepared for men. And you listen to what I'm talking about. But how will God admit him to heaven those who rejected it and chose the devil? And so, Jesus, when he called, he said, well, guys, you chose the devil. You worship the devil. You listen to the devil. You obey the devil. You travel with the devil. And now you can't escape heading where the devil is heading. Where the devil is heading is the, in everlasting fire. That's what is prepared for the devil. And this morning, I wanted to make up your mind not to travel with the devil. I want you to make up your mind not to follow the devil. I want you to make up your mind not to listen to the devil. Because if you do, then 
You are going where the devil is going. I want you to rise to your feet. The devil is going to hellfire. Those who rejected God, those who rejected Jesus, they will end up with the devil in the lake of fire. And guess what? That is not God's fault. That is their choice. That's their choice. And that is why Jesus has come. And he offers us eternal life so that we may have everlasting life. And when we leave this world, so that we can reign with Jesus in heaven. But it's a matter of choice. It's a matter of choice. And this morning I wanted to make your choice. This morning I want to make I said, Father, Father, I've made my choice. Made my I am not traveling with the devil. I am not following the devil to hellfire. No, I won't follow the devil to lake of fire. I have chosen to follow Jesus. I will follow Jesus to eternal life. I will follow Jesus to heaven. In the name of Jesus. I wanted to say to them, say, Satan, I am not your follower. No, no, I am not in your company. No, I am not your friend. I am not your slave. I am not listening to you. I will not worship you. I wanted to make up your mind and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, help me from today. To seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness all the days of my life. Second Corinthians 10 3 4 says, For though our, we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. The weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. I told you every negative word, every negative thought in your mind is the building brick for the devil to build strongholds in our mind. There are many of all that we are imprisoned right in our mind. Now, listen to me it is not the devil limiting you again, it is your mind. Think that you have believed lies that the devil has taught, that the devil has told you that's what you believe, and that is why you can't go beyond that level. This morning, I want to say in the name of Jesus, the of Jesus. all the strongholds of the devil in my mind, I pull you down now. I pull you down now. Every stronghold of no esteem, stronghold of failure, stronghold of fear, stronghold of rejection, I cast you down. I pull you down in the name of Jesus. Every imagination that is contrary to God's word, every thought that is contrary to God, I cast you down. I demolish you. I pull you down. Sometimes you can hold me as a prisoner. I am free. I am free. I break free. I break loose in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, this morning, Lord, we come against all the strongholds that the devil over the years has, has built in our mind, Lord. On the stronghold of rejection, stronghold of bitterness, of forgiveness, of hatred, of failure, of low self-esteem, Lord. Stronghold of failure, of poverty. Father, we come against it with your word. Lord, we pull them down. We demolish it. Lord, I pray for anyone that is here that the devil has held as a prisoner in his mind, in our mind, Lord. Lord, that the devil has made them to believe that there's something they cannot achieve, that there's something they cannot do. Many that the devil has thought that God, even God, does not love them. Many people, Lord, in their mind that I believe that they are nobody, that they will amount to nothing in life. Lord, I come against all those thoughts, Lord. I come against all those lies of the devil. I come against all those deceptions, all those deceits of the devil. Everything that the devil has put in the mind of your people that are walking against them, that are limited them. I demolish them. I cast them down. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I release everyone here, Lord, from the prison of their mind. Lord, from the prison that the devil has built, from the cave, from the stronghold, from the fortress that Satan has built in their mind. I lose your children. I release them. I release them from those prisons. I release them, Lord, from those caves, from those strongholds. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we declare today that only you we will serve. Lord, we will serve you, Lord, with our household, with our family. We choose not to worship the devil. We choose not to bow to the devil. We choose not to follow the devil. We choose not to listen to the devil. We choose not to patronize the devil. We choose not to receive any gift from the devil. And so, Lord, we declare today that we are for you, Lord. Our lives, our time, our strength, our energy, our potential, Lord, our family, our relationship, everything, Lord. Lord, we give them as a living sacrifice to you. Father, help us, Lord. We don't want to hand where the devil is handing, Lord. We don't want to follow the devil to lake of fire. And so, Lord, we declare, Lord, that, Lord, we are yours, Lord. And we will serve you. And we will follow you by your help, by your grace, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Lord, we give you glory. We give you praise. For in Jesus' 
Mighty name we pray. Do you receive the word of God this morning? Can you say loud amen? Amen. 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 Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. We hope you have been challenged, encouraged, and motivated to become more like Christ by today's teaching. If you would like to find out more about Errands of Revival and get additional teachings and materials for your healthy, spiritual growth, visit our website today at www.eradsofrevival.org.uk Or if you would like to enroll at our School of Discipleship, visit our website www.theschoolofdiscipleship.org.uk This teaching was made possible by the prayers and generous free will offering, donation and gifts from partners like you. You are welcome into partnership with us today. For information on how to become a partner, please call 1-868-292-9270 or 1-868-703-5572. Or you can email us at info at erasofrevival.org.uk. Thanks for listening.